and I'd like to introduce Andy MacDonald. Thanks, thanks very much, John. Yes, I, can, I rem remember it well. Uh, I check his pockets at every opportunity now. Um, but it's my uh, very great honour to uh, uh, address you. I'm simply the uh, segue between this part of the session and your uh, breakout uh, uh, meetings. But I do want to just add uh, a few comments for two or three minutes. And, and, and so it's really brilliant to be on a stage with the magnificent Chio Mura, our wonderful uh, uh, shadow minister for industrial strategy. Um, she, oh, it's absolutely wonderful that we've got <laughs> Chi leading for us on that. Um, and, and my own personal uh, welcome to John. He's a, he's a, a regular uh, visitor to the, to the North East. And I was very grateful, actually, in those very early days, then we, when we had the crisis uh, on Teesside over the steel industry, that, that was John's instant reaction was to get up to Redcar and have a, un, uh, get an understanding of exactly what that was meaning for, for my community. And um, he, he did that at a, at a, at a, at a, in an instant. And he understood at first hand just what the ramifications were for losing our uh, steel plant there. Uh, and, it, and the ramifications do roll out. Real determination right across this region because we've, we're very, very proud of our industrial and technological history. It isn't all just about looking backwards. It's about looking uh, to, the, to the future as well. But these core industries that we talk about, they, they're called core or foundation industries for a very good reason because they're the baseline for our industrial uh, uh, might and our manufacturing capability. So I'm absolutely de delighted that John's uh, recognised that we can be in the business of supporting those technological advances. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, uh, uh, I'm learning all the time. And in those early days, talking to John Redka, I, did, I had no idea that 66% of the world's steel currently in production didn't exist 15 years ago. It's a continuously evolving uh, process. So I'm delighted to see that we're going to be right uh, in at the heart of supporting uh, research and, and, and development. And the other reason I want to thank uh, John for coming back again, because... As a, as a true scouser, he, he makes this smoggy when he comes to uh, Newcastle seem almost like a local, so I'm very grateful to him for that. So. Um, but, you know, I, I got, I, John must have come up last night by train. Uh, it'll have taken him three hours, was it? King's Cross uh, to Newcastle. Um, I've come up from, from the borough this morning. Um, one hour, 25, you know, on the sugar boom, you know. I mean, it's absolutely outrageous. Here we are, a population of 2.3 million people, and we've got these antiquated uh, systems are still in place. It's absolutely and utterly scandalous. And Jeremy says, the further north you go, it's like a, it's like a journey in time going back. Uh, and it truly is. And if, and if we don't get that investment quick, uh, we'll be heading back to the birth of the railways. We'll be heading back to 1825. Um, so it's absolutely critical that we, we give that industry our support. The infrastructure, and I know John is going to be supportive of this in making sure that infrastructure spend is rebalanced. That ratio of £10 in London in the South East to one in the North East is just not a scandal. And, and a, a, an incoming Labour government has got to, to bring that to an end. If I just say a quick word about uh, railways... You'll see what's going on in that uh, battle at the moment, uh, that dispute. And it's being described as if it's the only issue in town is about opening and closing doors on railways. It is not. That's merely a part of it. The whole issue is focused on the safe conduct of that train and the safety of passengers. You know, everybody in this room, I'm sure, will agree with me. These are issues not just of safety, but they're of accessibility. People with vulnerabilities who get on our trains, they need to have somebody present. We've had incident after incident where people will be exposed, and we need somebody competent and skilled to take over the management of the train in those circumstances. So here we are yet again. We're in a situation where we're putting profit ahead of the passenger, 
and we simply cannot be doing that. And these companies are quite, quite clear about it. The reason that Abellio, otherwise known as Nederlander Spoorwegen, the, uh, the Dutch national company, and, 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 uh, 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 and Deutsche Bahn, they're here to derive profit to take back to their own state-owned uh, companies and their own nations to subsidise them. I'm not blaming them, I'm not making a point. These are simply the facts. That's what's happened. And the only country on the planet that's not able to run the railways in this country is our own. Now, how ludicrous is that? So, so look, I'm delighted to hear the commitment on transport infrastructure. I'm equally delighted to hear the commitment to our new technologies, our industry, and, and bringing those forward. Because I am absolutely convinced that the North East is the right place in the, in the United Kingdom to deliver that decoupling of challenging and dealing with our climate change and air quality issues at the same time as promoting industrial growth and through carbon capture and reuser, because uh, I say it's storage and it is reuser because we're now in the realms of using carbon and waste products as our feedstocks for our industry and the generators of our energy. And we in the North East know how these things work. And we can be the world leaders in these technologies. And I'm delighted that the Labour government is going to be getting behind that programme. And I'm grateful to John for his support today for that. Thank you.